So if you're looking for a setup to capture lectures, live events, presentations, or even church sermons, there's a huge range of gear that you could choose from. Here at Think Media, we've put together a great two-angle camera setup for our personal live events and workshops, and we wanna share that setup with you in this video. Let's go. You gotta just press record. Here on Think Media, we post various kinds of content, whether that be talking head YouTube videos like this, vlog style tutorials, live streams, and even event recordings. Other than our online audience, we have a yearly live event called Grow With Video Live. We also do masterminds about quarterly, in person, and then as well as workshops and things of that nature. And so we were looking for a two camera setup that can capture these teachings so we could post it on YouTube in high quality. So after doing all the research and buying the stuff and actually using it and putting it to work, we wanna break down what we have for our live production capture setup and uh, everything I mentioned in this video will be listed in the description below, so make sure you check that out. And so let's start with the cameras. For the camera, we went with the Sony a6400, and the reason why we chose this camera in particular, number one, I would say is the size. This is just a super small setup, you know, just right together is almost the size of like a DSLR. Um, and so we wanted something that packed up really light, but also was pretty powerful. And so other than the size, we also chose it because it shoots uh, with no record limit. So you, you literally could shoot as long as your card will allow you, um, as well as if it overheats or not. But I'll break down, I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, we also love the fact that this has incredible autofocus. And so you can actually set this to autofocus, uh, real time tracking, and it can lock in on a person's face for a duration of an entire hour talk. And you know, we've tested it, we used it at our live event this year, uh, Grow With Video Live, as well as a couple masterminds and a workshop we did, and, it sh and they showed out really, really well. However, there is a notable mention for another camera that came out after the Sony a6400, and that is the Sony a6600. You know, Sony did fix a lot of gripes and complaints that people had about the 6400. And so, you know, if you wanna check out the specs to that camera, it's a, it is a little bit more expensive than the 6400, about three to $400, but definitely worth checking out. We'll put a link to that camera in the description below. Moving on to the accessories for the camera, we bought cages for these cameras and a few reasons why we bought cages. The first reason is to relocate the hot shoe mount and also to have more options based off of where we, you know, put the tripod plate and things of that nature. You know what's so cool about investing in a cage like this is it also will distribute the heat. And so, you know, where uh, the camera could potentially overheat when shooting in 4K, um, having something like this could help it a lot because it helps distribute the heat across the entire body of the camera, not condensing the heat just to one concentrated spot, causing the camera to overheat. We also use a 128 gigabyte SD card and you definitely want to get something that's faster than about 100 megabytes per second and you know more and more as time goes on SD cards are becoming way more uh, affordable and you can actually get bigger sizes of SD cards and so definitely invest in an SD card especially if you're doing long content and like I said this camera doesn't have a record limit so it can record for however long your SD card is and so just keep that in mind when you're investing in an SD card Another accessory we invested in was a continuous battery power adapter. Uh, these are awesome because, you know, these little Sony batteries are uh, very famous for not holding a long charge. So instead of stocking up on a ton of these batteries and potentially having the scare of the camera dying mid recording, um, we definitely, definitely look into buying uh, this power adapter. You can also save some money by going third party on something like this. And uh, we don't recommend that though here at Think Media. We would say when it comes to battery, you definitely want to go OEM. But if you do want to save bucks and maybe take the risk, go ahead and check out the third party to save some dollars. The next thing we got to go on the camera was this Feel World touchscreen 4K monitor. It's the F6 Plus. Uh, this was a monitor that was actually sent to us by Feel World, and we did enjoy having this, uh, especially for the tight angle that we use. And so this just made sure, you know, ensured that you know whoever was speaking was in focus, crystal clear, and then obviously the the size difference of the LCD screen on this camera and this is a huge difference. And so this is where the cage came in clutch to be able to mount the monitor on the cage and you know keep it away from the camera and also uh, again, again I think that helps with a little bit of overheating but more than anything if we wanted to mount this at anywhere around the camera we could because of the cage and so this monitor has a lot of great features and some to mention are definitely like peaking 
uh, false color. You can import your LUTs if you're shooting flat colored profiles to see how it'll grade. And then it also has the ability to like pinch zoom, which is great to make sure that what you're shooting is in crystal sharp focus. Uh, this monitor comes in at $230. It's a great deal. Um, however, like I said, Phil World did send us to us and we would actually vouch for it. It is a great monitor. We do love that you can also power it up with a DC power or with battery, but Phil World does offer a lot of great monitors for whatever price range you're in. And so, you know, if you're just looking for something to get a bigger screen on, or maybe you shoot with a Sony that doesn't have a flip screen or whatever camera you have doesn't have a flip screen, investing in a monitor is a great idea, especially if you're filming yourself. Now, just to note, we only use one monitor. We don't put a monitor on the camera that's just shooting wide. Uh, we use that angle to just cut back to. That wide angle isn't usually manned, so we just hit record on that camera, and then the monitor goes on the tight camera, which uh, has a different lens from the wide angle, and so I'll get into the lenses, but real quick, I wanted to ask you, what camera are you using? Let me know in the comments section below. Now, let's get into the lenses. The first lens we use is the Holy Grail 70 to 200 G Master 2.8 lens. Now this lens is a beast, and uh, a beast in price, but also a beast in performance. So this is the lens that we use for the tight angle, uh, which will be on the camera that has the monitor. And you know, this lens is just so versatile, and its ability to stay at 2.8, is really good, and that combined with the autofocus, you know, abilities of the 6400, you actually get to shoot it in 2.8 uh, aperture and trust that it is in focus. The face detection is awesome on that camera, but we love this lens. This is definitely a holy grail of the lens. The price of this lens is like $2,600 brand new, but you could definitely get it used for around $1,800. Uh, I think we got it used on Amazon uh, with some warranty, but this lens is a beast. And for the second lens we use for that medium or wide shot is the 24 to 70 G Master lens. That too is a pretty expensive lens at coming in at $2,200, but you can also get it used for around $1,700. We're actually using the 24 to 70 on the camera right now. And just to let you know that there are huge alternatives when it comes to the lenses you can use to capture. You know, Tamron makes great alternatives, 2.8 lenses that are great alternatives, um, as well as uh, maybe instead of getting the 2.8 version of a lens, get the F4 version of the lens. You could probably save $1,000 on each lens that, uh, if you go that route. But uh, we actually list out a bunch of different lens choices and based off of what you're shooting in our Think Media Gear Guide. Um, and so you can check out the gear guide at thinkgearguide.com. Again, we just break down at any budget you're in based off of what you're trying to go for. So make sure you check out the gear guide in the description below. Next up is our tripod, and that is a fluid head video tripod. Now, when you say fluid head, what does that actually mean? That means that this ability to go left and right is very, very smooth, and you have the ability to kind of adjust it based off of the weight of the camera that's on top here. Um, you know, when it comes to tripods and fluid head tripods specifically, going cheap is gonna bite you in the yin yang especially fluid head tripods, if you cheap out, it's gonna show that you cheaped out. Why? Because a lot of the times when you're paying for tripods, you're paying for the longevity of the tripod. And so investing in upfront, uh, you'll be able to use the tripod for forever. I th this Manfrotto tripod that Sean has, I think he's had for literally 10 plus years, but I know he bought it for around a thousand bucks. Uh, tripods, you can definitely check out like OfferUp and Craigslist for people who maybe are like leaving the industry or something and maybe uh, score on a video head tripod. But definitely uh, look into a nice quality one, rated high, you know, aluminum possibly fluid head video tripod. And then usually the second tripod is a very compact, you know, like I said, that wide angle does not move. And so that camera doesn't need to be on a fluid head tripod, just needs to be on a tripod that can go at the same height level and, you know, maybe tilt axis and stuff like that. Now, when it comes to audio, I didn't want to go too deep into it uh, because a lot of the times there could be a soundboard for where you're filming and you can just get the audio from that or maybe potentially use a portable zoom recorder uh, like a Zoom H4n or a Zoom H6 and capture the audio off the board. However, it isn't a bad idea to wirelessly lav your subject. We love using the Sennheiser AVX uh, lavalier mic, and this is an awesome mic. Omar, where are you getting all this stuff from underneath the table, bro? I got elves underneath the table, bro. You sit on a throne of lies. We can swear by this mic. We've been using this for almost two years now, um, probably in like 70% of Think Media videos. 
this mic is being used. It's awesome for many reasons. I would say the first reason is its ability to just be rechargeable batteries. Like you're never gonna really run out of batteries if you start the day with a full charge of batteries. Also, it's a digital lav set, so it doesn't use frequency. So you're not gonna clash with like cell phones in a room or even uh, other mics because this is just gonna speak directly to the receiver that's on the camera. And then lastly, probably the distance this could go. So maybe you don't wanna tap into a soundboard and get in the way of somebody else's job. So uh, investing in a good quality wireless digital lav mic would be super, super helpful. So there you have it. That is the Think Media event gear list. That's what we use to capture our live events. Um, you know, two angle setup and uh, we, we repurpose a lot of our things that we do in person. But maybe you're in a church and you're looking for a great camera to capture the weekend message. Well, I would vouch for these Sony APC cameras uh, that came out in 2019, the 6400 or the 6600 and also investing in a lens. Maybe the camera gets outdated, but the lens will always be relevant to use. And hey, if you got value in this video, why don't you smash the like button for me? And if you wanna check out another video about all the setups we have here at Think Media, whether that be YouTube setups or vlog setups, tap the screen, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>